Sorry Kazabuchi, I'm stealing your thumbnails now, my bad gang. Has this ever happened before? Your teammate just randomly gets picked or even worse, they feed their brains out and die first, putting your team in a 4v5 scenario that makes you want to pull a Peter Griffin. How about those messy mechanical 3v3 fights that could go either way? How do you manage to swing those situations in your favour? While a lot of my videos focus on preventing those scenarios from even happening in the first place, they're still gonna happen and they happen to everyone, either in your average rank game or in a team environment. The first and most important factor has to be baiting aggression. We all know that terrible feeling of losing a team fight for a dumb reason at the beginning of a fight, but we also all know the feeling of losing a fight where we had a pick and should have won. So let's break down some of these fights and see what's actually happening. Take this fight on Blizzard World from a high GM scrim. The Cassidy dies first, which is a big advantage for the blue team. Not to mention, they also have more ultimates, a positional advantage since the enemy team are giving up space, and also that numbers advantage since that Cassidy just died. So who would you expect to win this team fight? Well, judging by the nature of this video, it's obviously not the blue team. What happens is that the Lucio on the enemy team decides to speed and kite back, but because of how close and far up his entire team was playing, this inadvertently baits the blue team into thinking that the rest of the enemy team are actually pretty killable. As a result, our Genji ends up aggressively solo blading into four people, desynced from our Doomfist. Thankfully, our Genji doesn't die, but he gets nothing with his blade, and as you can pretty clearly see, our Doomfist and Genji are desynced. Now our Doom's in, but our Genji's out. Now as you've noticed, there's going to be other factors to how we still lost this fight. The May Blizzard in particular, and the Sigma splitting off, but I'll talk about those in their respective sections. The second factor that can help you clutch is resources specifically HP, cooldowns, and distance. Usually, when somebody on your team dies, a lot of cooldowns have been committed to kill that target in the first place. Not to mention, they're probably on low HP themselves, and they're probably within close range. Going back to that Blizzard World example, you can see the first two factors here perfectly. The Doomfist especially is very low HP and without CDs, hence why he can't go in with his Genji. As for distance, the closer the enemy is, the easier it is to trade back and kill them. If the enemy team are playing on high ground, where they're closer to the Ana Zen backline, then trading and rushing onto them seems like the more viable option. Before I continue, check out my coaching, link down below at the top of the description. The third factor is actually ultimates. Disengaging from the enemy team's ultimates and then ulting back yourself in the mid fight can be a great way to clutch fights when you're down a man or two. Keeping in mind that in the mid fight, enemies are more likely to be lower HP, be in closer range, and have fewer cooldowns, you can see how this ties back into the second point. For example, here on New Junk City, the blue team have 5 ultimates and still lose this fight. They initially pop 4 ultimates, which is really bad fight planning to be fair, but the more impressive part is that only one person from the red team dies here. They successfully disengage the 4 ultimate push from the blue team. Now we're in the mid fight, so the enemy queen looks to get a trade onto the Kiriko, forces out their Suzu, and then pops Vampage, catching 3 and clutching up a very losable fight. Of course, this all stems from the blue team over ulting in the beginning, but if you're able to successfully disengage the enemy team's push, either with sustain or mobility CDs, and then pop your own ultimates in response, you've got a pretty good chance at flipping that fight. Referring back to Blizzard World once again, this is also what happens. The Doom committed his cooldowns and then got May ulted. It's honestly not that complicated. Now to splitting or flanking. The value of splitting is in the name. It splits the attention and resources of the enemy team, making them confused in the mid fight as to what to do. For example, here our May dies first and we're so close to Blizzard, but we still clutch up this fight. I think this is part in due thanks to the Dragon Strike, which while it does look useless, it does help split the enemy team and it buys the blue team some time. Then the Sigma splits from the Lucio, Hanzo and Kiriko, directly causing the enemy frontline to be confused. And you can see this with the remark from A looking in opposite directions. As a result, the worst of both worlds happen. The Remarchra isn't there to block or tank the Hanzo one-shot, and the Sigma doesn't even die for it. Here, I would have liked to see the Remarchra push the Hanzo. In fact, you can see him pummeling the guy to death 
so why he decides to switch up things all of a sudden, I do not know. Again, you can see this on Blizzard World, with the Sigma splitting away and holding that high ground, which causes confusion between the blue team's backline and the frontline. The correct play is to clear the Sigma here, ideally with that blade that we could have kept, and then now we're in a 5v3 situation and we just clean up hopefully being able to care that May Blizzard 2, having enough cooldowns to escape it. The fifth factor here is playing heroes that have the potential to carry or clutch. We can break that down even further to heroes with burst mobility and or burst damage. It's obviously going to be way easier to clutch and carry on heroes like Doomfist or Genji over somebody like Mercy. Though I will say that a Battle of Mercy in Valkyrie could technically have some clutch potential because you gain the burst mobility through your GA and a decent amount of burst damage with a buffed pistol. Here's a ranked example of this concept in play. Here, my Reinhardt just feeds and dies and clearly hasn't watched my do nothing video, so feels bad man, but we end up clutching this fight. And it's literally just because I hit an Icicle headshot onto the enemy Reaper. While I do end up dying eventually, that Icicle buys up enough time to get back to point and pop our ultimates in the mid fight, again referring back to section 3, allowing us to win that team fight. And again, back to that Colosseo example, it's that Hanzo headshot that ends up confirming the key trade. Somebody like Soldier or Cassidy wouldn't be able to do this. But why mention this if the Season 9 patch is going to remove all one-shots barring Widowmakers? Well, there's another aspect, keeping note of which hero dies. Back on Blizzard World, the hero that died was Cassidy, not somebody like Sigma. If the Sigma died and the Cassidy lived, do you really think the Cassidy could just hold the high ground for free? Probably not. Now this isn't me saying that if your tank dies, you should just give up and say GG go next you're always able to trade back onto their tank, especially if they use a lot of resources, as mentioned in section 2. Tanks don't just die for no reason, you have to use resources and your own HP to kill them in the first place, allowing an easy trade to happen. I will say that some of this might change after the season 9 patch, where almost all one shots are gone, so it's harder to have that level of burst damage that someone like a Widowmaker is still gonna have. But keeping in mind, your own teammates aren't going to get one shot and die in a 4v5 scenario. As a result, other factors that are more macro or more brain based are going to matter more when it comes to clutching, rather than hitting that key shot. The last factor when it comes to clutching is open space. This ties back into the first point, because a lot of the time, you do want to be baiting teams to aggressively walk into open space. I've alluded to this in both my webbing video, using an example on Lee Jack Night Market, where the entire point is open space, but also on Colosseo, where you can get a really nice kill box on the attacking team. This stuff is also pretty common in higher level play, as you're seeing in the background, where teams like Gladiators will just not take fights where they know they're playing at a disadvantage. As you're seeing, the Glads baited Dallas to not only walk aggressively, tying back into that first point, but to also walk into open space, giving up their huge positional advantage and losing a fight they should have won considering their alt economy. As Nata mentions here, the counterplay to this is that Dallas should have just played more distance and play slower, bait Glads to walk up and dive, then Hanbin on the Zarya just walks into Gladiator's backline. In conclusion, there's a lot of factors that go into winning fights that you really shouldn't be winning. A lot of it comes from punishing mistakes from the enemy team, but you can proc those mistakes by baiting the enemy team to aggressively push into open space, popping ultimates like Flux, Blizzard or Blossom in the mid fight, or splitting and taking risky flanks that you need to take if you're at a disadvantage. That's it for the video, let me know your thoughts down below, and until next time.